Tonight, a strong earthquake has struck western Japan. The quake with an intensity of 5 plus on the Japanese scale of 0 to 7 jolted northern Wakayama Prefecture at 7.18 p.m. on Tuesday. According to the Meteorological Agency, the focus of the quake was 7 kilometers below northern Wakayama Prefecture. The agency says the quake had a magnitude of 5.5 and that there is no danger of a tsunami. The local authorities say that no damage has been reported so far. Once again, a strong earthquake has struck western Japan tonight. A quake with an intensity of 5 plus on the Japanese scale of 0 to 7 jolted northern Wakayama Prefecture at 7.18 p.m. on Tuesday. According to the Meteorological Agency, the focus of the quake was 7 kilometers below northern Wakayama Prefecture. The agency says the quake had a magnitude of 5.5 and that there is no danger of a tsunami. Local authorities say that no damage has been reported. At the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant, sections for covers that will contain radioactive materials released from the damaged reactors have begun arriving at the site. The covers will be installed at the number 1, 3 and 4 reactors. Buildings housing these reactors sustained severe damage from hydrogen blasts triggered by the March 11th earthquake and tsunami. Pillars, beams and other parts are being pre-assembled at a port 50 kilometers away from the plant. The concrete bases of the structure will be delivered on Wednesday, with more sections arriving from mid-July. The operator of the plant, Tokyo Electric Power Company, says it hopes to complete assembly work by late September using a crane with a 140-meter long arm. Reducing radiation released from the reactor buildings is crucial to getting the crisis under control. This month, TEPCO will estimate the current amount of radiation released from the reactors. The figures will be used as a reference to gauge the effectiveness of the covers when they're installed. Effective parts have been replaced in emergency backup generators at two nuclear power plants in Japan. The Nuclear and Industrial Safety Agency found the defective parts at the Shika plant in Ishikawa Prefecture and the Mihama plant in Fukui Prefecture. It performed inspections after a component cracked in a backup generator for the Monju fast breeder reactor on the Sea of Japan coast last December. Attempts continue to prevent another hydrogen explosion at Japan's crippled power plant. The operator of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant says it would send a robot inside the number three reactor. The machine will measure radiation and determine if it is safe to begin injecting nitrogen. Tokyo Electric Power Company is rushing to implement the procedure. Both the number one and number two reactors have already had nitrogen injected into them to prevent further explosions. High levels of radiation are hampering work inside the building housing the number three reactor. TEPCO workers on Monday covered parts of the floor with steel plates to block the radiation. TEPCO says the remote-controlled robot is equipped with a special camera that shows radiation in different colors. The firm plans to begin the operation on Wednesday after preparations the day before. Once it has confirmed that radiation is falling, it will inspect pipes that will be used to inject nitrogen. It says if there are no problems, it will begin the procedure before July 17th. The Japanese government will conduct a detailed survey of radiation levels in Fukushima. It will use the data to review existing evacuation orders and advisories. In a meeting on Monday, the government decided to take charge of all radiation surveys being conducted by ministries, local municipalities, and the operator of the disabled Fukushima plant. All the data will be collated by the Education and Science Ministry and made public through a dedicated website. The survey will begin in July. Measurements will be taken every two square kilometers inside the no-entry zone and other areas where evacuation has been advised. Priority will be given to schools and streets frequented by children. The government plans to compile a database by the end of August before they return to school. Nuclear Disaster Minister Goshi Hosono says he's hoping to start examining the data around July 17th. The results will decide whether to cancel one of the advisories requiring residents to be ready to evacuate in the case of an emergency. July 17th is the date when the nuclear plant operator is due to complete the first step of a two-stage plan to bring the crippled reactors under control. The ongoing crisis at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant is prompting some local governments to change their minds about hosting nuclear power plants. For, say, they want to break with the nuclear energy entirely. 
Last week, NHK contacted 28 prefectures and municipalities, not including Fukushima, to see if their thinking about their nuclear plants has changed. Fifteen said they cannot decide immediately on whether their nuclear plants should be shut down. Five municipalities said they would not seek to have their plants scrapped because nuclear power remains a vital source of energy. However, Shizuoka Prefecture says it intends to start a campaign immediately to have its nuclear power plants decommissioned. Three other local governments said they intend to launch similar campaigns in the near future. The Hamaoka nuclear plant in Shizuoka is located by the coast and sits right on top of a fault where a magnitude 8 earthquake is considered highly likely to occur. Shizuoka Governor Heita Kawakatsu said the nuclear crisis in Fukushima has underscored the need for a fundamental review of Japan's energy policy. He said efforts must be made to shift to new sources of energy.